<laughs> okay, guys. Um, if we had been able to do all of our sine, cosine notes in one day, in other words, if we had not signed up, done the field trip, sign up yesterday and everything, I would have done a total of four graphs, the two on the front and two from the back. So I'm going to go ahead and keep with that and just do two more from the back. Um, because I, my hope is that that will give you a little bit of work time, and then you guys can also see tests. When we turn the worksheets in on Monday and the worksheets are due, if you guys have questions, we can go over some questions from the worksheet to also help you, you know, get things set up there. So um, if you come up to a point and there's something else we definitely want to look at from the notes, that's fine as well. Um, I was going to do three and six. So, yeah, six, we got to do six, too, because, you know, we're all scared of fractions, so. But, okay, so let's start with three, and keep in mind, this thing, huh? No, I'm on my notes. I'm going to teach it first. On Monday, I can help you on the worksheet, but I'm not doing all six on the worksheet with you. By far, you know. So, um. So as we look at these, the topic that we did not get to yesterday was phase shift, okay? We never had a C value, right? We never had anything added or subtracted inside the parentheses. And so that's the piece, you know, we're, we're going to have to look at today. Now, you're going to kind of have to flip back and forth if you don't remember all the pieces. But I'm going to take you kind of through the same process here. Um, first thing, stop and think. What is it I'm going to be graphing here? What's my graph? It's a sine graph. Can you visualize a sine graph without flipping back? Are we at that point yet? Okay, if not, if you're not at that point, flip back, right? So a sine curve is the mountain and valley, right? Okay, that's just my sketch. That's what my head's thinking like. Okay, I'm going to draw that mountain and that valley. Okay, if I go in the order I was going in yesterday, okay, now, on these worksheets, it's just the graph. I would encourage you to write this stuff down. It helps you to organize. When it comes quiz time, what I've gone to doing on the quiz is I'm going to put these blanks next to the problem. I'm going to put center line, amplitude, phase shift, all these, with the idea that you should be filling these lines in, and that, A, helps me with grading purposes, because I can kind of see where you went wrong a little easier, but then also helps you guys to get organized, so... First question I was asking yesterday was center line. What's my, where's my center line supposed to be? It's the number added or subtracted at the end, yes? So what is my center line here? Zero, because there is nothing here. So think of this as an invisible plus zero, which means what's my x-axis going to be? your typical zero, okay? Normally, if you recall from yesterday, I would label the, number, the center line in either one of two places. I would either label a zero here or zero here. Technically, if it's zero, you could probably get away without numbering it, but to keep with the process, I would suggest you number it. The next thing I was asking you was amplitude. Thoughts on amplitude? One, where do we find the amplitude? It's the A value. It's the number in front multiplied by sine or cosine out front. I have no number out there, so one. What does amplitude mean? How high and low your graph goes, right? So how far you count up from the center line and how far you count down from the center line. So in this case, I'm going to count one up and one down, which means... If I go up one from zero, I'm at one. If I go down one, I'm at negative one. Same process as yesterday. Next thing I was asking you was, I guess I can go ahead and write in there if you want. High and low, that was how high and low, period. How do we find the period or what one cycle is? 
2 pi divided by b. And where is b? The coefficient of x. So this is going to be 2 pi over 3. So that means one cycle of sine normally goes from 0 to 2 pi. Now one cycle of sine goes from 0 to 2 pi over 3. Okay, I'll be honest, the thirds are the hard ones here because we have to shrink it kind of weirdly. And phase shift. What's my formula for phase shift? C over B. Do I actually have a C value finally? Yeah. yeah. So C over B, what are your thoughts? Pi over 3. Now, like traditionally, this is our left-right movement. It's opposite the sign that's inside of it. Okay? So always go with opposite the sign that's on, in this case, where the pi is. So this is going to be a positive pi over 3, which means this is going to take me right pi over 3. Okay? So it's positive pi over 3 because it's opposite that sign there. If you struggle with knowing is that negative pi over 3 or positive pi over 3, here's my backup plan for you if you end up needing it. Take whatever is in your parentheses, so in this case 3x minus pi, set it equal to 0 and solve that. That gives you your phase shift. So meaning 3x minus pi equals 0. If I add pi to the other side, 3x equals pi. If I divide by 3, x equals pi over 3. Does that help? Or I don't know. Again, it's just one of those, you know, if you get confused on what's my, which sign am I supposed to be going, which way am I supposed to be going, there's your help. Okay. You got all that information? Finding the information is the easy part, right? putting it into action that's the difficult part here okay which you know quiz I can give you some points here if you can at least get the information right but then we also have to use this information okay so we're gonna label this one a little differently yesterday I was labeling like 0 to 2 pi or 0 to pi and then we broke it in we still need to break things into four pieces now this here we have a cycle of 2 pi over 3. So from 0 to 2 pi over 3 is my basic graph. Except, what else do I have to incorporate here that we didn't have yesterday? Phase shift. So my graph would normally start at 0 into 2 pi over 3. That would be one cycle. But now I'm going to shift it pi over 3 right. So what did start at 0 is now going to start where? pi over 3. So what did end at 2 pi over 3 has to end where? 3 pi over 3 or pi. Okay? With that in mind, and I'm going to go through that again. On my graph, I'm going to label out to pi. Because I'm working with thirds in this problem. Instead of just automatically going and breaking this up into fourths, we need to have pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3 marked on our graph, yes? So for this case, I'm going to take 0 to pi, and I want to put pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3 on here. So break it into, eyeball it, right? Break this into thirds instead of four pieces. So pi over 3, 2 pi over 3. Are those equally spaced? Because that means something to me, that they're equally spaced there. Now, before we think phase shift, my graph has to go from 0 to 2 pi over 3, yes? 
So let's think about what that looks like, and then we'll shift it. Right now, my from 0 to 2 pi over 3 is just broken up into two pieces. Ideally, what do I want it broken up into to do a sine or cosine curve? Four pieces. So I'm going to at least, minimum expectation, is put the tick marks there. So I at least have it broken up into four pieces. On something like this, what's a half of a third? A sixth. So if you label these, and I'm going to give you the easy out and not require you to label something like this, but you'd be labeling in terms of sixth. So it'd be 1 pi over 6. This would be equivalent to 2 pi over 6. This would be equivalent to 3 pi over 6. And then there is your 4 pi over 6. Does that make sense? Okay. Again, I'm going to give you the easy out. If you have pi over 3, 2 pi over 3 labeled for me, I'll let that be. Just make sure you get the tick marks in the middle. Now, I do my final answers in pen. I'm going to let's. I'm going to sketch this in pencil, and then I'm going to shift it. If you can do this all at once, you don't need to put the initial and then shift it. More power to you. But this is kind of, you know, my teaching style. Okay. So, again, ignoring the phase shift, I need to start at zero and end at two pi over three. I'm doing what kind of curve? The sine curve. So my sine curve says I would start at zero. I'm going to go where first? I'm going to go up. I'm going to max out above that first tick mark, which would be pi over six. I'm going to max out a quarter of the way, right? I'm going to cut through pi over three. Can you predict? Now I'm going to have a minimum below that next tick mark, which would be 3 pi over 6 or pi over 2, and then I'm going to cut back through 2 pi over 3. Are we okay with that? So if I was doing my graph right now without a phase shift, it would look something like that. However, we have a phase shift attack on, right? So you need to take that graph right there and move the whole thing over pi over 3 because my phase shift is pi over 3. What is pi over 3 on the way I draw my graph? How many marks is it? Two marks. So every one of those things I just did, every cross through, my max, my min, I'm going to move over two marks because I'm moving at pi over 3. Okay? So, I did start at 0. Instead of starting at 0 now, if I want this cycle, it's going to start at where? Pi over 3. I did max out at the first mark past 0. Now I'm going to max out at first mark, the next mark past pi over 3. I was cutting through at 1 pi over 3. Now I want to cut through at 2 pi over 3. Okay, minor detail. Are you catching what's gonna, what looks a little weird here? Okay, I'm going to say I did have a minimum below the next tick mark. However, teacher failure here, what did I not do? I should have put that tick mark in when we were putting the others in. My apologies. Okay. So I'm going to have a minimum below after the 2 pi over 3. And then I was ending at 2 pi over 3. Now I'm going to end at 3 pi over 3. So this purple line that I'm drawing right here is going to be our sine curve look something like that.
<laughs> what do you think? I'll be honest, this is one of the harder ones we're going to do because it's a, to, a lot of times we struggle with thinking in terms of thirds instead of the halves and fourths. Halves and fourths are just a lot more natural. The thirds are a little more awkward. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not quite crazy about my graph. I guess it's not too bad. Only because it's a little unequal. Did I go all the way down to negative one? Looks like I might have stopped a little short of it. So, and that's one of those right there, that's one of those borderlines. You know, if I'm talking about grading, you guys, this one, I definitely went, you know, I could tell I aimed at one. That one, I don't know. I don't know that's far enough off I would take a point off. It's more when I can just tell you blatantly disregarded and didn't hit your mins and maxes. Okay. Okay, questions on this one. Okay. My other one I was going to try was six. Uh, besides the negatives, there's also fractions. God forbid I give you guys fractions to work with, you know. Because fractions are just so not real life or anything. Because everything is perfect whole numbers in life. Okay. What kind of curve? It's a cosine curve. So as I think about this, a normal cosine curve... It's a big old valley, right? Starts high, goes down, comes back up. Okay, so that's just me thinking about cosine. Okay. Um, center line. The D value at the end, which is negative one. You want to go ahead and label? So if my center line is negative 1, you can either label right here as negative 1 or in at the origin as negative 1 or both, whatever. Just give me a negative 1 in there somewhere. Amplitude. Okay, so two things to talk about. The amplitude itself is just it's the absolute value of A. So it's just the positive 3 out front. Yes? So my amplitude itself is A, and that means that 3 is how high and low my graph goes. Yes? So that means when I label this, I need to go up 3 and down 3. What is up 3? Up 3 from negative 1. Puts me at 2. So I'm going to label that highest spot 2. What is down 3? Negative 4. Because down 3 from negative 1 is negative 4. Now, along the way, you guys were telling me the amplitude is 3, but you also notice there is a negative. What does that negative indicate? This is a reflection across the x-axis, so it is flipped. So what was going to be a valley is now going to be a mountain or a hill. Period. Here it is, 2 pi over b. 2 pi divided by, what's my coefficient of x? 1 half. What is 2 pi divided by 1 half? 4 pi. Because 2 pi divided by 1 half is 2 pi times the reciprocal. So times 2 over 1, which is 4 pi. 
So now, instead of my others, if we've changed it, we've shrunk them down some, this one we're going to expand. Okay, we're going to stretch it out. So one cycle now takes us 4 pi. And lastly, phase shift. Phase shift is C over B. So what's my C over B? Okay. Pi over 4 divided by 1 half. Now officially though, opposite the sign, if this is a plus, I need to call this a minus pi over 4 divided by 1 half. Divide. So negative pi over 4 divided by 1 over 2 is multiplied by 2 over 1. So negative pi over 4 times 2 over 1 is going to be negative pi over 2. And because it's negative, we're going to go left. So we're going to be going left, pi over 2. If you don't like how I just did that, set what's in the parentheses equal to 0 and solve. You'll get the same answer. Okay. Ready to do some setup of our graph? How do I have to label this? One cycle normally is going to go where? From 0 to 4 pi. So we have to label at least out to 4 pi. Now, which way direction my phase shift is going to take me? It's going to take me left. So do I have to label anything past 4 pi? No. We're going to have to label something left of 0, but I'm going to come back to that moment. So if we're labeling out to 4 pi, that means I'm pretty much going to go over to my arrow, and I'm going to label 4 pi. If we're going to write pi over 2, I'd have to go a little bit even past 4 pi. But we're going to label out to 4 pi. Now, remember I like to break things into 4 pieces. So what's in the middle of 0 and 4 pi? 2 pi. So now I'm at two pieces, so I need the middle of those pieces. What's in between 0 and 2 pi? 1 pi. What's in the middle between 2 pi and 4 pi? 3 pi. That's some of the easiest breaking up we've done. Okay, now, one little catch we have to throw in here. When we shift this, we're going to have to shift pi over 2's. I haven't labeled any pi over 2s, have I? Where are pi over 2s in relation to what I have? In between all of them, yes? So my recommendation, I'm not going to make, again, it gets a little messy if you label everything on here. You can label them, but you at least need to put tick marks representing those. Does that make sense? So I'm going to have a tick mark in between at each halfway point. I'm going to label the first one as pi over 2 just because. But you don't have to, you know, again, they're in the middle. I assume they are halves. We actually have to go left pi over 2, don't we? So what do we need to do to the left of 0? You've got to at least label a negative pi over 2 there. Now, you can go ahead and put a negative pi. Can you please try and equally space it? That means something to me when I'm grading these. Okay? If pi over 2 on the right side is about that big, what should it be on the left side? about that big. I get it. Are all of mine perfectly even? even? No, but points for attempt effort here, okay? That's, you know. So if I label this, I've got a negative pi over 2, and I just went ahead and put a negative pi. You don't necessarily have to have the negative pi, but since everything else was in terms of pi, that's why I did it. 
Okay, lots of things to keep track of here. <clears throat> you can go ahead and do the phase shift as you want. Me teaching it, I'm going to draw the initial and then put in the phase shift. Okay, so I'm going to just draw my graph being from 0 to 4 pi. What graph am I drawing? Okay, a flipped cosine curve, which means cosine normally starts up high. Since it's a flipped cosine curve, we're going to start down low. I'm doing this in pencil because this is just my, this is my run through. Okay, cosine curve starts low at my first quarter, right? It's a cut through. Where is that quarter here? At pi. So we're going to cut through at pi. At my halfway point, we're going to have a, a max, top of my mountain. Where is my halfway point? 2 pi. So I'm going to max out above 2 pi. At 3 fourths of the way, I'm going to cut through again. Where's my cut through point? 3 pi. So you kind of have to ignore that those halfway points we put in there. Maybe you should have waited. I don't know. And then, where's my stopping point? Or where's my ending point? Underneath the 4 pi. Take that curve. Each of those four marks that we make, we have to scoot left. Left, pi over 2. What is a pi over 2 marking here? One mark, right? Because that was all those in-between marks, right? So you're not even going to scoot it as far as the whole thing. It's just one little tick mark. So, I did start down here on the y-axis. Where am I starting now? Underneath the negative pi over 2. It did cut through at pi. Now I'm going to cut through at pi over 2. I did max out at 2 pi. Now I'm going to max out in between pi and 2 pi. Is this making sense? I did cut through 3 pi. Now I'm going to cut through in between 2 pi and 3 pi. And I did end under 4 pi. Now I'm ending in between 4 pi and 3 pi. I personally draw my curves a lot better if I make some marks first and then go back and draw the curve in. Okay, guys, this is what you have to work on getting these, okay? It's important that you really work to get these sine-cosine curves. When we add secant and cosecant, you have to be able to be able to do sine and cosine because secant and cosecant are just adding on to those, okay? You have to, the whole phase shift, the period, we're going to keep doing those through all of our curves here, all of our graphs, okay? So these will pair up with several of the ones in homework. Um, we have ones that pair up with 4 and 5. I know we didn't take time to do those, but put some effort into trying to figure this out, guys. <clears throat>